Next of the Syrian Arab Army deal heavy blows to mercenary terrorists in Aleppo. Twenty opposition parties discuss in Damascus ways and means of saving Syria from the dangers threatening it. A sit-in in Damascus to commemorate Syrian martyrs and joint prayers in Homs to de- condemn evil film denigrating Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Good afternoon. Welcome to a news bulletin. I'm Dani Nizam. The Syrian Arab Army units continue to purge Aleppo and its countryside from terrorist groups, inflicting high casualties among them. They stormed the area of Qasr al-Wali in the quarter of Sayyid Ali. They also carried out another operation al Atab, killing a large number of terrorists who were trying to attack a unit of armed forces in that area. A tour in Al Maidan neighborhood in Aleppo shows the amount of destruction that was caused by the armed terrorist groups. In front of the school of Abdul Muttalib al Qud, the scene shows the sum of destruction and damage caused to the school's walls and courtyard by the armed terrorist groups. We were living in calmness until the terrorists came and started chanting by the name of God. We looked and we saw the streets full of them. I returned to my house to be surprised. All the rooms were gone. No walls. The furniture has gone. I have small children, five children. They stole the whole furniture. My bedroom is gone. Terrifying. Not from here at all. May God protect the army. When they came, they cleared the neighborhood from terrorists. They look strange. And they opened the first floor and they stayed in it. Then they started opening holes in the walls from house to house throughout the neighborhood, in my own neighborhood behind the Bosat al-Akhras area. They threatened civilians, telling them to leave their houses. They stole the houses and they left nothing behind. They destroyed the homes and they also destroyed the electricity grids. They even stole the clothes. They took everything. Reconstruction works started in the neighborhood as trucks started to clean the streets of the traces of damage and the city's council tried to provide all the basic requirements for the citizens. Whatever happens will not leave our country. The people of Aleppo had their say, rejecting terrorism and supporting the Syrian Arab army who protects the land and provides security. Nearly 20 parties and political opposition bodies attended the National Conference to Save Syria organized by the Coordination Committee of the Opposition at the Umayyad Hotel. The speakers stressed the necessity of ending violence and restoring resorting to dialogue in order to find a peaceful solution to the crisis. They also stressed the necessity of restoring coordination and understanding within the Syrian community. The Russian ambassador in Damascus, Mr. Azamatullah Kolmahamadov, stressed the necessity of finding a peaceful solution by the Syrians themselves, away from any foreign intervention. He also stressed the necessity of ending the support of the armed foreign mercenaries. He called for political dialogue among all parties without any prior conditions in order to find a peaceful solution. He pointed out that Russia's efforts were aimed at achieving these goals in collaboration with all the parties concerned. He said Russia was in contact with the Western countries, the UN Security Council and the regional parties, stressing the necessity to end all violence. The Russian ambassador also asserted that the Annan plan and the Geneva Statement must be the basis of peaceful solutions in Syria. He said Russia was ready to continue to deal with all shades of the opposition according to these principles. Russia gave priority to national unity on common grounds, rejecting both violence and foreign intervention in favor of comprehensive national dialogue to serve the interests of all Syrians. The Russian Foreign Ministry announced that Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov 
will participate in the 67th General Assembly and the UNSC meetings concerning Syria that will be held in New York. The Foreign Ministry said in a statement that Lavrov will meet the UN General Secretary Ban Ki-moon as well as he will participate in the ministerial meeting of the Organization of the Collective Security Treaty Organization and the BRICS Group. Syrians held a sit-in in Tashin Garden carrying candles in commemoration of our marches from the scientific capacities and soldiers of the Syrian Arab, Arab army. They expressed anger against the states which support the terrorists with weapons and money in order to disrupt Syria's stability. They condemned the Saudi government which prevented Syrians from visiting the holy shrines. An office for the National Reconciliation, headed by Sheikh Nawaf Abdul Aziz Al Mulham, was founded with the aim of accelerating the national reconciliation process and rapprochement among all strata of Syrian society. Meanwhile, protests against the film Insulting Islam and Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, continued in Homs, in Al Abbasiya neighborhood. Hundreds gathered shouting slogans against the film and the cartoons that harmed the Prophet. They also condemned the flagrant human rights violations of the West and its double standards. The mosque of Fatima al-Zahra in Homs witnessed a joint prayer by clerics who condemned the evil film denigrating Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The speakers stressed their rejection of all such films against any symbol of divine religions. They also asserted the necessity to respect all these religions and they called for unity and for preserving all the noble values of Islam, including the ethical and civilized way of dealing with the others. 121 from Aleppo who were misled into getting involved in the current events without committing murder were released, having pledged not to bear arms or commit acts of vandalism again. Day after day, masks are falling off the faces of those who pay lip service to freedom in order to disrupt serious security and stability. They are, in fact, mere tools in the hands of the West and Israel carrying out their schemes in this region. Informed Turkish sources told the Al-Manar newspaper about a Turkish-Israeli agreement signed secretly a few years ago aimed at fragmenting the Arab homeland and establishing many states allied to the Zionist entity. This exposes Erdogan's anti-Arab policy and its involvement in bloodshed in Syria. The Foreign Minister of Turkey, Ahmed Dawood Oglu, is serving the CIA and acting in collusion with Qatar and Saudi Arabia to carry out this sinister scheme to fragment the Arab homeland under an American cover with a pretext of promoting democracy and human rights. Chairman of the Turkish People's Republican Party, Klitsch Chedar Oglu, said that Erdogan's gov government's support for the terrorist attacks in Syria, Syria constitutes danger against Turkish national security. He described Erdogan's policy towards Syria as risky and running contrary to conscience and morals, adding that Erdogan is implementing diktats and policies imposed on him by the West. He affirmed that such policies would create more problems for Turkey. In Turkey, one soldier was killed and four others wounded in, in an armed attack on two of the police station headquarters east of the country. The authorities announced that an armed group had attacked two police stations located on the road between Tunjali and Erzincan last night. The clashes between the two sides resulted in the killing of one soldier and the wounding of four others. The New Zealand Southland newspaper criticized the noise of Hillary Clinton against Syria and her suspicious silence about the suppression in al-Bahrain. The American newspaper, Town Morning Call, criticized Washington's intervention in Syria and the ignoring of its internal crisis hitting the American people. America's double standard policies made the U.S. create big noises against the Syrian government and maintain silence concerning the repressive policies in Bahrain. Washington considered the Bahraini regime as a close ally because it houses the American Fifth Fleet. The Al Khalifa regime paid huge sums of money for American weapons to be used against their own people who call for social justice. The repressive policies in Bahrain are being carried out by the mercenaries from Pakistan, Yemen and Jordan who are tempted with money 
and the Bahraini nationality in order to carry out the dirty work of the Bahraini regime, attacking the civilian demonstrators, including women and children. A foreign journalist reporter said that he witnessed dozens of bodies of the victims who are being thrown in close vehicles after one of these demonstrations. The American paper also called upon the U.S. government to distance itself from intervention in Syria's affairs. The paper wondered why the U.S. administration showed interest in the Syrian affairs and neglected the internal problems and the social economic crises of its own people, and it called for distancing from the supplying of weapons to the groups with weapons in Bahrain. The Minister of Information, Mr. Omran Azabi, discussed Syrian drama with a number of Syrian drama artists and their leader, Mrs. Fadia Khattab. The minister listened to the opinions of the artists concerning the removal of any blocks that hindered the shining capacity of Syrian drama at the hands of the participants in the aggressive campaign against Syria. The minister pointed out that the government was ready to assist the upsurge of Syrian drama, invoking Legislative Decree No. 33 of 2012, aimed at reducing pressure on dramatic production in Syria and consolidating a positive environment, embracing this production to make it express Syria's cultural heritage. The Syrian eagles, one of the endangered species that are being carried, cared for and monitored closely by the Syrian Ministry of Environment, and on this a scientific documentary film was made by experts. The year 2012 has been set as the year of protecting the Syrian eagle, according to the Ministry for Environmental Affairs, as it launched a national campaign to protect this eagle through introducing it, its home and its ways of living, in addition to the ways to protect it, especially that this kind of eagle is rare. Besides, this animal has a moral value. And here in the mountains of Tartus, some of these rare eagles' nets have been discovered, and this is something unprecedented in the world. The Syrians' rare and wonderful eagles' nests have been found after years of searching. It took us two months to shoot the film of this eagle. We filmed the nests in the mountains of Banyas, near the Qadmus area, in the Shina area. Its short fingers are designed in a way that catches snakes. It can also swallow the whole snake. Some countries are proud that they have two or three pairs of this eagle. Here in Syria, 20 to 30 pairs of it exist. Unfortunately, not all of them are breeding because they mate for life. And it was really difficult to shoot this film due to the sharp sight of the eagles. So we put the cameras in almost invisible places. The Ministry for Environmental Affairs held meetings for this issue to set the procedures such as the lectures and the cultural centers to let the people know more about this kind of eagle and how to protect it. And now it's over to Vani with our economic news. For more information, visit our website, syriaonline.sy. God bless Syria and God bless you all.